interested in in uh, representing Nevada on this committee. Yes, actually, I'd like to nominate um, Manny Fernandez. Uh, Manny is an executive director with Marin Family Action. Uh, he's Hispanic. Uh, part of his uh, job, he said, he's been an advocate for low-income housing, uh, as well as working with uh, county officials regarding housing mortgages and related issues and youth financial literacy. He saved many families from foreclosure. Um, which I think so he's really got his eye and heart involved in this and he also uh, also lives in uh, subsidized public housing so he has uh, you know he has a real understanding of, of this so I really think he would be excellent on this um, I'm also wondering if there isn't an opportunity um, maybe a way around around some of this is to uh, put in some alternates is that an opportunity so in case somebody sure, no, I don't see any reason why the com committee couldn't do that. Because um, both uh, Stephen Cervantes and Annabelle Denisoff are both, uh, you know, equally deserving um, and don't pose any conflicts. And I'm wondering if we, um, if it isn't to, do you, you want know? to have an alternate one and an alternate two in case Manny can't make it? Sure. So why don't we put Stephen Cervantes as alternate one and, okay. and um, Annabelle, Annabelle as, as alternate number two? Okay. okay. Right. There we go. Uh, may I ask a question, mm -hmm. uh, Chair? Mm -hmm. I'm a little confused. Um, I guess, like Novato and San, San Rafael, Rafael, sort of just are a one person vote. Mm -hmm. When we get to Richardson Bay, it will be the members of the Richardson Bay. I don't know how many of us are here. Does that require a quorum? No, it just requires finding it out in consensus. Okay. And then when Denise just, I guess, selected Betty Fernandez, does that? Nominated. Nominated. Well, no, but you select. If you're well, we're going to take a vote. If, if, well, wait, wait. If Denise is nominating Manny to be the representative from the bottom and not the county representative. No, no. Everyone is gonna sit on the county that we that we pick tonight. So we're not we're not nominating any local representatives. We're we're ignoring the box that says local area committees because it was very confusing. So so Manny will participate in, in, in this committee and the and the ones that you he won't participate in on this when the city council meets nor in San Rafael but when you all meet in your local area planning committees whoever you a pick Manny person. a Manny person will, will go to that and then we'll come here <laughs> but now what if we what if we as a committee vote against Manny mm -hmm. I'm not saying we will no. just so I understand the rules we vote against Manny uh, to be a, a part of the county Denise can still have Manny as part of the her local. We can't stop her from doing that. That's, That's her, right. She has a hundred percent say. That's right. Over what goes on in her but, area. But yeah, but she's saying that she wants Manny to be on this countywide committee. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go to the fund. <laughs> going to go to. Excuse me. Why wouldn't we have them serve both? Because maybe there isn't a local for for San Rafael and Nevada. Nevada, it's oh, there's it's not the, a local council. Yeah, it's the council, yeah. it's the council members yeah. that do it. So we don't have an existing commission. We but also you, don't you have the staff to support another commission. Uh, so it's so you, you know. could confer with Manny, but yes. you wouldn't. But there, right. but you don't have an official meeting for your local area. Like, you know, that's correct. Okay. I have another question. Yes. No, I'm going to call on oh, Richardson Bay next. So just well, that's why I have a question because you indicated that you were in favor of Nancy Johnson, and I yes. thought that was on the basis of it being a county person, and not saying anything against Nancy Johnson. But I thought I would, we in Richardson Bay would still have an opportunity you to do. nominate you someone do. else. You do, and we're going to vote on Nancy, and we're going to vote on whoever you you suggest to. So you do. You can. So we get two. Yeah, <laughs> you get two. I mean, it's conceivable. <laughs> well, because there's a lot of cities, right? Yeah, there's a lot of cities. So it, now, are you the only councilman here from the Richardson Bay? It looks like it. Who else is here? Just me? Uh, Tiburon's not here. Uh, I mean, she must be here. Linda. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and, and, right. And, and Sia is here. Who? Yeah, Sia? Oh, you're Belvedere. Yes. All right. 
Go, go for it, you there three. You go. <laughs> no, they just have to pick one. So, do you, do any of you have an idea who you'd like to pick? So I, I would nominate Shirley Thornton. Okay. She went for Shirley. She went for Shirley. Um, what, what are your comments down at this end? Uh, um, I've, I've only uh, read the uh, mm -hmm. application, so I don't know the uh, people personally, but I would uh, nominate uh, Nancy Johnson also. Well, you don't have to do that. She's you can pick you. someone else. I'm going to do Nancy. Oh, you do that. Yeah. Don't spoil your vote on that one. <laughs> that one's already covered. Uh, I'd like to nominate Kathy Cortez. Okay. Um, but not saying that I wouldn't listen to the discussion about Colonel Thornton. Okay. Um, anyone else? Okay. Would you like to speak to to uh, to Shirley? Sure. Uh, doc, uh, I would say that Dr. Thornton is um, well known in the um, uh, in her community. Ten years, Deputy Superintendent for the state. Uh, retired U.S. Army Colonel and founding trustee of the Moran Community Foundation. She is uh, well known and well liked and I think she would bring um, amazing talent and insight to our, to, our, uh, to our group and that's why I nominated her. I will say that um, I received a call from Supervisor Kate Sears who represents Southern Moran and uh, indicated that um, she would like Shirley Thornton on, and also Nancy Johnson. So, of course, she can't vote when she's not here. That's right. She's not on the committee. I'm just telling you what she said. <laughs> okay. I called my wife, and she wanted that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to speak to? Kim? I, I guess. I, not, I, I also got a phone call from Supervisor Sears. Oh, okay. And and I have absolutely no problem with Colonel Thornton. <laughs> But I guess this really, and, and, and I think either one would be excellent. And the reason why I bring up Kathy is because, and I don't know her, I've never been, I don't even know if she's here, uh, is that this goes to my division between whether we want someone on the committee who is more on the recipient side, who had, would be more sensitive to what we do from that point of view. And I think Kathy would make an excellent choice in that. Or do we want to go from a uh, administrative point of view, and surely Colonel Thornton would be excellent for that. And so I'm just manifesting the the, the, the indecision that I have with regard to where the policy will go. I will I will accept joyfully either person. I, I will mention that during the uh, hearings for the analysis of impediments, the members from the Action Coalition for Equity kept stressing over and over again that they did not want us to to just think of nominating low or, or not nominating of reaching out to low income people that they wanted there to be a ladder for people to rise up they wanted to include people that um, really had reached a certain a certain uh, place in this world so you know I, I think I just wanted to remind you of that. Okay, that's, did say that. that statement of intent is not binding on us. No, it is no. not. No, it, and I didn't say it was. Okay, yes, do you have a comment? No, I'm just listening. Okay, <laughs> okay. All right, is the board members have any, uh, we, could pick, uh, we could pick one and we could um, have the other as an alternate. Would you like to do that? So would you like to have? Are we going to vote or pick? You, well, you pick and then we're going to vote. So do you want to have Shirley Thornton as the person and 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 Kathy the alternate? That sounds like that sounds like voting. <laughs> no, you just say yes, and then we're gonna we're gonna approve what you said, <laughs> or not, or not. Well, why don't you? I mean, I would, I'd be happy. For you. I would go I, just to 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 support my position. I would go with Ms. Cortez as the as the main person and Colonel Thornton as the, as the alternate. I can be outvoted. All right, um, then let's um, let's let the committee. Does the is the committee know? Let's let the committee vote. Shall we do that? Can we do that now. We're going to do that at the end. So we're going to come back. 
and Nancy's going to be at large. And we're going to vote on Nancy, we're going to vote on Manny, we're going to vote on everyone. But we do have, a, a, we do have two conflicting um, uh, votes here, so that will have to be a vote when we come back. All right, we have San Rafael, and so this goodie is his to be Andrew's break. Don't you love it? Your first meeting on CDBG. <laughs> well, th this is a particularly hard decision because, uh, well, I, I feel the constraints that are, have been imposed on me by this pro the real limitations of this process, some of which we've discussed, some of which we haven't discussed. My inclination, my nomination, is uh, for Ann Kellogg. Notwithstanding your very compelling appeal, Raphael, um, on your own behalf as a nominee, and let me explain my, my my thinking here. The charge that's been given to us, at least as far as I've been able to research, is for us to make this process as broad and as inclusive as possible. And I noticed that Ann Kellogg is the only person of Asian American or, in particular, Vietnamese descent among all of the applicants for all of the local area committees. And I'm concerned that if we don't widen the net as much as we can, then we're missing an opportunity. I'm also, speaking of the constraints we've talked about, I'm a little worried that, Raphael, if you were the first pick, we would go through this conflict process and we would end up losing you. And the, really the last thing we want here is someone lost to HUD's vagaries, and then we don't have that voice on this committee when it comes to allocating funds. So that would be my nomination on behalf of San Rafael. Now, having said that, if Ann Kellogg is unable or unwilling to serve, then I'm prepared to indicate as my alternate. Well, I was going to say Raphael Durr, but he's walked out, so perhaps he doesn't have an interest in being an alternate. I would identify Sue Mace as that alternate. Okay. Okay. All right. Upper Ross Valley, we just have one nominee, and that's Cecilia Zamora. I vote for her. Okay. <laughs> Wait, we didn't get a chance. <laughs> We're not voting. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to nominate her. She's please, please, Council Member Coleman. I, I feel really that there's a lack of applicants in the Upper Ross Valley. Mm -hmm. I want to see how we can do that. Cecilia Zamora has, yeah. has more than fulfilled the requirements to serve on this committee. And in future times, I'd like to just really go out and, Good. and pound the bushes and get some more people from Ross Valley to, Good. to uh, serve. How about you, uh, Sister? Yeah. <laughs> I, and for me, I think that I know that when we have our committee, our, our local area committee meetings, we get a, a good showing, yes. but, um, as, such as the way with San Simon <laughs> Fairfax. Um, and I think, and we take, we take, we take the public comment very, uh, we take it sincerely, and I also always encourage, coming from an advocacy background, I always encourage citizens who want their voice heard to contact us long before public comment um, and, and meet with us uh, uh, so that if there are other people, specifically in our area, and I believe in any other area, I, I would like to believe that every council member who serves on this uh, commission is, is open uh, to, to hearing input on these issues, whether they're nominated or not. So or we're fortunate and unfortunate in that we only have one applicant, so that will be our nominee. But um, I'd like to really encourage that it, you don't have to be on the commission to have a, have a voice. Great, thank you. OK, and then for West Marin, um, the only person representing West Marin in the CDBG planning is uh, Supervisor Steve Kinsey. He doesn't really have any cities. He has just all of West Marin. And he asked that on his behalf, I would recommend that he has two people to help him cover that area. And that's Andrew Marshall and Carlos Parada. And I understand we said Andrew has a, had a conflict, but he doesn't have the conflict because he's um, resigning from the board. So. Um, so I think before we vote on the slate, I think we need to I think we need to um, a vote on who we want to represent uh, Mill Valley, the Richardson Bay, and the nominees were Miriam Alfonso, who's here tonight, Alan Bortello is here, Kathy Cortez um, from Tiburon, Nancy Johnson, who who um, I'm going to nominate, so we will vote on her separately, and Shirley Thornton. So I'm going to ask. Um, I'm just going to ask the board for a vote. Who would like 
Um, Shirley Thornton as the member and Kathy Cortez as the alternate. Uh, Judy, I would support that. So let's raise our hand. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have Shirley Thornton. We don't get to vote the other Yes, one. please, those who vote no. Okay. All right, so it's going to be Shirley Thornton as the member. It's going to be Kathy Cortez as the alternate. Now we're going to vote on the slate. And the slate is um, Manny Fernandez uh, with the two alternates. But I'm just going through with it. Uh, Shirley Thornton, um, Ann Kellogg, Cecilia Zamora, Carlos Parada, Andrew Marshall, and Nancy Johnson. Uh, do I have a motion to uh, nominate those? So and we have a second? Second. Okay, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 So we have now added how many to our CDBG committee? No, we not count the alternate, just the middle. Six. 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 Oh, wait, 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 seven. One, seven. 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 Manny is one. Nancy, Shirley, oh, Nancy, yeah. Ann Kellen, Cecilia Zamora, Zamora, and Andrew Marshall, Carlos Brown, seven. So we're going to need a bigger room, but that's great. Thank you. Good luck with scheduling. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Can we talk about Trump? Since yes, let's the do. Thank you for reminding agreement. me. Do we want these to be one or two year terms? My proposal, since I've been so victorious so far, yes, so we need to is go. one year so that we don't, so that we actually have a chance to make sure we do it right the next time. It, it doesn't indicate that we wouldn't renominate these people, but I, I really think that hearing from the community, I don't want to put in stone something that might be defective. Does everybody agree with one year? Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are choices, one or two years. No, we can do anything we want. Right? Can't we? Right. Yes. Uh, I I would concur with one year, and I'd like for us at that point in time to have a have a <laughs> much clearer understanding of what our expectations are, a much, I think, um, more rigorous opportunity to recruit in our communities, um, and a better sense of, of uh, who, who, you know, the, what we're looking for in applicants. Good. And I think that if, if we can figure that out within a year and do re-recruit re and potentially re-nominate the same folks, but... Um, the, Give us that clarity. I agree. I agree. I agree so what? So one year terms. All right. All right. Done. Yes, Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so then, item number four is policies to adjust to a 19 percent funding cut in the community development block grant and a 46 percent funding cut in the home program. Uh, Roy, are you going to do the staff report on this, please? Can I, can I go back a step? I just want to make sure I got the names right. Yes. For the main members, we have Shirley Thornton, Ann Kellogg, uh, Manny Fernandez, Nancy Johnson, Cecilia, Cecilia Zamora, Andrew Marshall, and Carlos Parada. That's it. Okay. Um, so would Nancy Johnson and then Andrew Marshall be contingent upon um, the HUD process? Yes. The, I mean, they both are, are, have, said, have said that they're going to, uh, one is going to resign from, from the board that they sit on, and the other one is going to withdraw their application for funding so there won't be a conflict with the funding. The, the rules may apply differently in the two situations, but we'll have to look into okay, that. Okay, fine. Thanks. So, staff report on the, uh, the funding. And, and your recommendation. The staff report covers a couple of issues related to funding cutbacks. Um, just to give you the context, the CDBG Community Development Block Grant funding will be reduced by 19%. That will bring us down to a grant of 1166000 the home allocation is being cut more seriously. That will be cut 46%, which will give us 594000 in funding. Um, the Board of Supervisors had a workshop meeting on February 7th when there was discussion about 
whether it would make sense to add a new layer or a, a firmer layer of priorities um, in the allocation of funding. Um, we talked at, at that meeting about some of the constraints we have from HUD, including timely spending and, pro and project readiness requirements, as well as the overlay of fair housing and equal opportunity considerations that may constrain selections of project sites. Um, the board had a no board members had a number of positions which are described in the report on pages four and five. There really wasn't a consensus. Um, there was some feeling that we really need to use the lens of promoting fair housing and equal opportunity in selecting projects, but also some other comments that coordinating with other funders is a way to keep track of what's going on in the community and what priorities should be. So our recommendation from staff on this issue is that we coordinate with other funders since we no longer have enough CDBG and home funds to have a significant impact on our own. And we also recommend that we be cautious about adopting any new priorities since HUD has already imposed a number of choice limiting requirements. Um, the second issue we looked at in the staff report was cost pressure on administration. Um, the CDBG regulations allow us to spend no more than 20% of available funds on administration. Um, we've already cut staff from three to two and a half full-time equivalents. We're expecting in the 2012-2013 program year with the reduced funding that we will be somewhere between $3,000 short of covering our administrative expenses and maybe up to $49,000 short with probably the most likely amount in the $30,000 range. That becomes a draw on county general funds. And one way of reducing that overage would be to reduce the number of projects so we have fewer contracts to administer. I did want to note that although public services are limited to 15% of our funding, during the public hearing and staff recommendation process, the staff probably spend more than half of our time on the public service activities because they tend to be more controversial. So I just wanted to put that out there as a general issue of awareness. If we can put more of our emphasis at a staff level on the housing and the capital projects, we'll probably be able to make sounder decisions. Last year, we funded 38 CDBG projects. And the range of numbers of projects over the last 12 years has been between 36 and 52. If we were to reduce the number of CDBG projects in proportion to the decline of funds, that would bring us from 38 to 31 projects. There are some fixed costs of just having a program complying with HUD planning and regulatory and reporting requirements. So I think more realistically, if we want to bring our administrative expenses in line with the funding, we should probably try to reduce the number of projects by something like one and a half times the grant reduction percentage. That would mean bringing us from 38 to 27 projects. So, Currently, we're, in the last year, we funded 38 projects. Proportionate decrease to match the decline in the funding would bring us to 31 projects. If we want to go a little bit further to be, have a better chance of bringing our costs in line, that would bring us down to 27. So our recommendation for the CDBG program is that the Priority Setting Committee set a goal of reducing the number of CDBG projects from 38 to 27 per year. Instruct county staff to make all reasonable efforts in our budget recommendations to achieve that goal and to ask all the planning areas to join in that difficult process. 
And just as a, a note, that is going to be as difficult for the staff as it is for the committee. We may not be able to reach the goal of 27, but I think we have a responsibility to make that effort. As for the home program, um, our recommendation is that the committee adopt a policy that home funds be allocated in amounts large enough to facilitate speedy implementation of significant housing projects, knowing that this is likely to limit the home funding to just one project in the upcoming year. Roy, for the benefit of the, the new members and actually for the benefit of everyone who's been on this for years, this is very confusing. Will you give them a few examples of some of the, the CDBG projects that we have supported in the past and of the home projects? Because those are the two categories that when you meet with your local planning group that you'll be looking at. Could you do that? Just Sure. Off the top of your head. In, the, in the home program, we fund only housing projects, mm -hmm. and that's a really broad range. Um, so in the past, we did for fire example, the, the, the fireside, San Warner Clemente Creek. housing, Warner Creek yes. currently under construction. Oh, Gilead. Was Gilead one? Gilead House did not get home funding. Okay, they, they got another, but it was Warner Creek. Yeah, okay. Tucson. Tucson, Tucson Senior Housing the Tucson also got home feel. funding. Mm -hmm. um, For seniors. In Larkspur, the Drake's Way project. Okay. So the, the larger... Okay, and then what about the funding. CDBG funding? Those are the ones that are really in, in CDBG, we fund three categories. There's housing, capital projects, and public services. In the housing category, Gilead. It's many of the same projects that have gotten home funding, but also um, smaller scale projects like Gilead House or Tam House or Galilee Harbor, um, Center Town in San Rafael. In the capital category, we funded projects like actually the Curb Cuts in San Rafael, which is an ongoing program. Um, Pickle Lee Park Community Center, um, the Marin City Senior Center. In the public service category, um, we have funded things like the Family Law Center, Marin Head Start, the Housing Search Specialist, the Brain Injury Network, um, the Food Bank, uh, a number of child care programs, Senior Access. Okay, so what what we're asked to do tonight before we start meeting with our local planning groups or our city councils is that the staff is recommending that we coordinate with other funders uh, because of this significant cut that we've had and um, that we be cautious about it, adopting any new priorities when we go out in the communities is no matter how enticing those might be and that we try to find other nonprofits to join with us in the in the funding um, and do you have any questions or, or any comments about that are we all in agreement that we, we would do that yes pam can i get the number again on what we, we it was reduced by 19 percent for the cdbg to I, you said one point something yes, okay. so it's, it's one million one hundred sixty six thousand oh four one is the amount we have, not that, that that'll be the new amount for the okay. 2012 13. What was it last year? Last year it was 1.4 million, it was actually 1.1 1. 1, million four hundred forty thousand five hundred forty two. And do uh, who will be contacting the the uh, um, the local funders? Will staff be doing that? Are you going to expect the, the, the committee members to do that? Oh, the staff will do that. All right, any more questions? Or, yes, Ken. Uh, we went through this last year where you asked us to approve a reduced number of projects. And the response I remember giving is that I just assumed leave it in your, our response then was that we would leave it in with your discretion how many projects could be properly funded 
with the money you had and the administrative costs that you had connected to those projects. I'm wondering why do you need us to give you that direction if you can simply just fund fewer projects if it's appropriate in your judgment anyway? We need extra backbone from you. <laughs> well, you need our help to talk to. You need our help to talk to. Um, it, it helps us to be able to tell the nonprofits in the community that we have the support of the committee in reducing the number of projects. And also, when we come back to you with a proposed set of recommendations, um, we may say this is what we need in order to meet the goal that you adopted. And at the local level or at the countywide level, when you're actually confronted with the projects and the need in the community, it may be a temptation for the committee to say, well, we can add one project here, we can add one project there. And that's how we ended up with 38 projects. Um, it's, it's a so complex Stan story wants to every hold year. So up and shake it in your face and say, remember February 16th? <laughs> so you want a doctor and have them see us? <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh sure. Um, Roy, is there a way to go out to, uh, you know, I'm thinking of like the North Bay Children's Center, you know, which has always gotten, uh, always received what seems like it's not a lot of money. You know, I think last year they got seven or eight thousand dollars, but um, it's vital to their program. So is there a way of going out to the people that are going to be asking for the funds? and sort of telling them what the, you know, appealing to them for maybe coming in and not asking for as much because of the limited resources and us trying to, I mean, is there any way we can appeal to the people? I mean, I know everybody wants their money, but we don't have enough money that goes around. So I'm just wondering if there isn't a way for them to come in and say, we understand, so we're only requesting this amount. You know, some of that's already happened. The, the degree to which we're lowering people's expectations is uneven. Last year we had some cases where we actually had enough money to give agencies more than they applied for, and the constraint was that they had gotten so dismayed by the funding prospects that they applied for less than they should have. We are visiting the applicants, um, you know, both the county staff and then the staff in the cities of Nevada and San Rafael, and talking to them about the funding situation. So you know, that, I think, is having some impact on, on lowering their expectations. Of course, everybody's filed their applications already, so it's too late for them to change the amounts this year. But we are trying to be in dialogue with them and to be realistic about what the situation is. Thank you. Are there any more questions before I take public comment? Anyone from the public like to comment on this? Yes, please. <coughs> Good evening, my name is Carolyn Petey. I'm with Fair Housing of Marin. Um, and we've enjoyed many years of collaboration with the county and are very grateful for the support that we've received in CDBG funding through the years. Um, and as a member of the National Fair Housing Alliance Board of Directors, I travel to Washington, D.C. three to four times a year for board meetings as well as to meet with members of the House and the Senate um, about fair housing issues that are important to us. As we're all aware, CDBG funding um, has, been, has been cut uh, pretty dramatically. Uh, it was funded at $2.95 billion nationally for fiscal year 2012, which was a $1 billion cut from fiscal year 2010. The CDBG program provides housing and community development funding uh, to local and state jurisdictions, which in turn are required to carry out fair housing activities. And during the past several meetings, um, all of the National Fair Housing Alliance board members have been emphasizing to our legislators the importance of CDBG funds, and uh, specifically to create and sustain jobs and encourage economic development, particularly crucial in times of economic downturn, such as we're facing now. We've discussed with legislators the fact that local jurisdictions rely on CDBG funding to carry out their fair housing responsibilities and assist them in their mandate to fair, affirmatively further fair housing. Um, and Fair Housing of Marin, like other fair housing organizations, use CDBG funds to conduct education and outreach to, uh, for housing discrimination investigations as matching funds uh, for HUD uh, monies um, or fair housing programs and to help families facing foreclosure. 
We also discussed the fact that CDBG funding and other housing and community development funding has to be used in a manner that increases access to fair housing choice and life opportunities to the greatest extent, extent possible, which is, of course, what we've been talking about in Warren County for the past several months. Um, actually, it's longer than several months now. Um, and um, our message to the Hill, the Hill was really loud and clear that the continued decline of CDBG funding uh, means that local jurisdictions have been forced to cut back services um, and housing and redevelopment projects uh, that could potentially be used to ease the sting uh, of our economic crisis in, in, in an equitable manner. And we've been urging Congress to increase CDBG funding to alleviate the burden of commitment, uh, sorry, the burden of economic crisis on communities across the U.S. Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, um, and no one in this room is happy about cuts in CDBG funding. Um, but I think we need to remember how important it is as individuals and as um, and or as organization uh, representatives uh, to let our uh, to let our legislators know in very real terms what it means when we uh, uh, what these funding cuts mean to our communities. Um, I left with Roy a fact sheet um, that we gave to those legislators uh, with whom we met uh, on CDBG, CDBG issues from a fair housing. Uh, point of view, and we're happy to have that shared with um, whomever is listening, and I really do think that it's one of those things where um, it, it, it's almost as though we're willing to, um, it's, it's just that it's, it's bad news all over. We know what's happening, what, what Congress is looking at, and the news, news is definitely not good on the Hill. On the other hand, I don't think we can give up. Um, I think we have to continue the, 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 to, to always push and say, this is what we need. This is what we're seeing in a very, very real way in our communities. This is what the loss is um, with, with real stories. And so I, I just want to put that out there um, that I think we can actually you know, do something even if it feels at times futile. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Sure. Anyone else want to comment? Yes. I have a big enough voice, I think I'll stand. Can, can you get his voice on can the tape? Can you hear me over there? Okay. <laughs> Paul Cohen, Executive Director of Legal Aid Marin. For 16 straight years, I was a CDBG applicant. Before I came to Marin, it was my bread and butter. I was in San Mateo County. I think what this committee has in front of it is a unique opportunity to revamp the whole program, including when you start the process. Some of you have heard me say this before. If you are going to prioritize what you're going to do with CDBG money, you should do it before people apply for the money. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever to have priorities set after people have said what they need. What happened in the past when there were shortages of money is councils and regions like yours have said, well, this year we're going to focus on fair housing and equal opportunity, and maybe next year we're going to focus on seniors. That doesn't mean that you cut out all other applications. It just means that you prioritize how you're going to use that limited funding. You are now ready to step through the looking glass. You are now entering Wonderland. And Wonderland looks actually pretty bad because there's so little that can be done with this money. I am no longer an applicant for CDBG money, not just because I was interested in this committee, but also because it is not worth the headache of coming to all of those meetings, trying to fit a square hole into a round, a round peg into a square hole. I mean, there is just so little that can be done. But if you do it the right way, and you prioritize first, make people apply, and then you have a much more focused selection process, you're going to be able to do much more and not have the frustration in the community that could result. I think there's a lot of frustration already. You definitely have been doing good work and hard work in the past year. Nobody doubts that. But there's a lot more to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, so let's bring this back and um, let's, um, do you want a vote on this? Do you want us just to do a consensus on your three the staff recommendations? Fine. Okay, so the first staff recommendation is that we coordinate with other local funders since we no longer have these funds to have a significant impact on our own. And I do think 
I mean, we're not going to get into this discussion tonight, but I do think that Paul brings up a good point that we do do this earlier so that before we send out the app, the call for funding. So I, um, once we get through this round, I would like to see us start that next year. Um, so the, uh, do we all agree that staff is going to, will cooperate? Oh, go ahead. Sure, sorry. If we could instead, I, I would ask for that we have a discussion on Good. what Paul, rather than implement, because I look at it from a different perspective. That's fine. We're not going to do anything anyway, so we will have a discussion on it before we do it. the difficult side of the panel. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we <move> them. <laughs> they feed on each other. I know. <laughs> we will have that discussion. Um, with all the committee members. But right now, we're going to deal with, uh, I'd like to hear from the committee, do you agree that we coordinate it with local funders and that we be cautious about adopting any new priorities because of the funding shortfall? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, so that's uh, agreement on that. And the second staff recommendation is that the priority setting committee set a goal of reducing the number of projects from 38 to 27 just so that staff will be able to process them. Yes. Madam Chair, yeah. do you need a motion on this? He said just consensus. Okay. Thank you. Do you want a motion on this, staff? I think that's why it's all, that's why it's here. He wants it. He, want, he wants us at his back. I, I think a consensus would be fine as long as we note it as a decision. That's fine then. Do we have a consensus on changing the, yeah? Well, I'm going for 31, but if everybody goes for 27, You're it's just okay. in a mood yeah. denying, I will tell you. Uh, the staff recommends. I mean, just remember, to go from 31 to 27 is, is, is excluding four programs. Yeah. Every single program is important. Every single program gets less than they're entitled to. I know. If you want to limit it the way that Roy wants, it's fine. My view would be, say, 31, and if he, feels he can't effectively do it with more than 27, that's fine. If that's not good enough for you, we'll go for 27. But I, I, I hate to tell you, you can't have more than 27 programs. He says make all reasonable efforts. Yes, okay. okay. All right. And the third staff recommendation is that we adopt a policy that home funds should be allocated in amounts large enough to facilitate the speedy implementation of significant housing projects. Okay. I like agree. apple pie too. All right. We're going to agree to that. Um, and you know, I I would just say that that when we when you meet in your planning groups, that um, please keep in mind that we are under the voluntary compliance of the analysis of impediments, and the fair housing and welcoming people really has to is an important lens that we need to be looking through because we do not want to be another Westchester County. All right? Brian, did well, you have a Just to, to add on to that point, one of the other changes that we're promoting um, this year in, in the wake of the AI adoption, in addition to expanding the committees, is we've asked all of our applicants, I believe on the application forms, to provide a rationale as to why their funding requests would support, in some fashion, um, mm -hmm. fair housing. So you'll hopefully see that when you review the applications, but as Supervisor Arnold uh, mentioned, it should be a point of discussion um, when you're uh, sitting down and deliberating on the various applications before you. Thank you. Yes. I'm wondering if we could have, in some way, is the, I've forgotten your name, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Fair. Madam Fair Housing. Fair Housing Number Right. Um, if we could have, um, perhaps the, the draft of a letter to send, or a copy of what you gave to Roy, so, uh, absolutely. That's so that we can uh, sure. be involved. Sure, I mean, I can either, um, it's possible that I have an electronic version, in which case I'd be happy to right. send it great. To, to whomever, um, or so we Roy can, get can our, our city council to, to send a letter to our legislators. That's a great idea. I can, I can send it in an electronic form Terrific. to everybody. If you don't have um, a non-PDF version that might be easier for people to use, but I can do it either way. Let me look to see what I have, and I can, I can look at it. Thank I you mean, very the much. The more I think we distributed and, and 
put the word out better. Um, and, and I have to tell you that the legislators that I did meet, the legislators that I did meet with, or rather I met with Secretary Hayes, um, who then tell their legislators, you know, what kind of, well, anyway. Uh, but, uh, but in any case, um, when I met with them, all of them were positively disposed toward the message. Um, of course, we, I was meeting with what we consider friendlies, um, and um, that, that's not where the real fight is. But I think the more we can arm them with some really good information and compelling arguments, I think the better off we are. Thank you very much. So before we adjourn, I really want to thank the committee. You all have done a great job tonight. It wasn't easy, and this was a brand new thing that we've initiated. We've never done this before, and I'm really proud that we've done it. And I want to thank you. I want to thank staff for all the work they've done. And um, now just go forth to your planning areas, pick good projects, and we're going to come back here in May. Is that correct? Uh, the end of March, actually. Uh, oh, we're coming back at the end of March. We're going to the supervisor. You should all have schedules in your envelopes tonight. In our envelopes? Mm -hmm. I don't have an envelope. You can wear it separately. Thank you very much. We're adjourned. And thank you, everyone, for staying and for coming. Bye-bye.